Come here. Come here. I got something to show you. Everybody, this is Nicholas Rogers with Big Timber Lodge, and I have something top secret to show you. Clear this out. So, in this case, an AR-15 with quantum lock technology from Blackout Defense. What is Blackout Defense? Well, they are a DOD contracting engineer firm out of, I believe, Arizona, and they make parts for tanks in the army, ICBMs for the Air Force. They make parts for the International Space Station and the space shuttle when we used to have it. And they got bored, right? Making parts for that type of stuff is boring, right? right? What do they want to do? They want to make AR-15s for people like you and me with like alien space age technology. So let's get right into this, okay? I'm excited. Okay. Unboxing like a mother. <laughs> this is the AR-15. But before we get to that, let's see what else we have in the box. We have a two with the terms BCG. I remember this from boot camp when I was in the military. We used to call that birth control glasses, but this definitely doesn't look like it's going to fit on my face. So let's open this up. Oof. Oh, it's the bolt carrier group. Ah! BCG, not birth control glasses like from boot camp. This is the bolt carrier group. Fully assembled with the Blackout Defense logo. Looking hot, looking good. Mmm. All right, what else do we have in the box? Receipt. Location where I picked the rifle up because I live in communist Colorado. 10 round magazine. Oh, that hurts my feelings. Don't worry. I'm good. Trust me. Anyways, next up a Striker AR 15 charging handle. So I'm guessing the charging handle is not in the rifle. Wow, that is very lightweight. Holy moly. That is lightweight. Okay. Okay. Oh, I like that handle. And looks like some stickers, little, little pieces of gum, and some Allen wrenches. Those aren't pieces of gum. We'll get these shortly. I know exactly what those are for. All right. So, ah, linear compression pad installation. So they are linear compression pads, which I already knew what they were. All right. Also a sticker. And, ooh, quick detach mount that can go on the stock of the rifle or the uh, handguard. And now what you've all been waiting for Space Age Alien Technology Blackout Defense AR-15. That is pretty. Oh, man. So this is special, right? This is a special AR-15. Not only is it made out of like material that they found on the moon with Neil Armstrong. That's what this is. It's like moon rock material. It's like fully heat resistant, ultra lightweight. Still doesn't have any gravity because it came from the moon, right? So it's like really lightweight. And then it has the quantum dual taper lock technology inside where the barrel meets the receiver. Can't really see it right now. I'll post some pictures. Not only does it have that technology, but it's a 13.9 inch barrel, which is amazing. 
because I didn't have to get a tax stamp for this. Well, how does that happen? Why didn't I have to get a tax stamp? For a 13.9 inch barrel, which is the exact same question that my gun store owner, Tammy, asked me today when she saw this. And I said that's because it has a dead air chemo hybrid, meaning it's a muzzle brake slash flash hider, chemo adapter, pinned and welded onto the end of the 13.9 inch barrel, making it 16 inches. So this technically is not considered a SBR, even though it has a normal buttstock on the end of the rifle. That feels like a mag pull. Oh, it definitely is a mag pull. Ooh, that's a nice looking buttstock. Nice mag pull grip for the pistol grip. 13.9 inch barrel, a dead air silencer, 13 or a chemo mount hybrid, pinned and welded on the tip of the barrel. Interesting fun fact about this though, because it's space age technology. You'll notice there is no forward assist button on the side here that you can push forward with. I know some of you hardcore Vietnam vets, Desert Storm vets, people that I served with in like the Iraqi war, Afghani war, that typically had M4s or M16s, you're going to look at this and be like, you need that forward assist. Um, my question to you is why? How many times, and I'm, this is a legitimate question, how many times in your military career did you ever actually hit the forward assist button? versus pulling the charging handle back, checking for a clear, and then releasing. Um, so that's my assumption as to why there's no forward assist button because it just alleviates extra baggage on an AR platform that doesn't need to be there. Now, another fun, fun feature of this rifle is the safety selector switch, which is ambidextrous, you'll notice on my right side as well on my left side on the left side because I am right-handed and that's what I told them that I am when they made this rifle the safety selector switch is longer on the left side versus on the right side so if I would like to use the safety selector switch on the right side I still can but it's going to be more with the index finger and it's going to be a direct push down versus the finger laying across it, which is what I get more on this left side with my thumb. Another fun feature that they did, because this is a semi-automatic AR-15, not one of those fully auto M16, M4 clones. It has a 45 degree throw lever built into it. So instead of having to go 90 degrees from safety up to semi-auto, it's only 45 degrees, which is nice. It's a lot shorter of a throw. My finger doesn't have to get into as awkward of a position as I move the thumb up and down. It's like this versus straight up and all the way down to here. Straight up, all the way down here, not anymore. Now, it's just click and down, and click and down. A lot faster, easier on the finger, less movement with the hand to manipulate my hand into the position that I can work that safety lever. All right, so let's get into the internals of this rifle. I'm very excited to put the bolt carrier group, not the birth control glasses, into this rifle as well as the charging handle. So first time opening this up, uh, there's just your standard takedown pins. I'm gonna push on this with my finger, that's nice. I have an AR-15 that I might break out later to show you that takes almost a tool to push that takedown button out. So I pull that button out and this opens up very, very, very easily. Wow, that is nice, nice, nice. That is very clean on the inside. Whatever this coating, this it's almost like a Cerakote, but it's Moonrock. It's Moonrock is what it is. You know, I, I've heard that this, this coating can withstand like 5 million degrees Fahrenheit because it's moon rock. 
Um, but it's very clean all throughout. And one of the big things that I wanted to talk about with this rifle that you won't see on many other ARs because it is proprietary to the Blackout Defense Company is going to be the trigger system. It's called a zero reset trigger system. Now, pump the brakes. I had the same thought you probably did when I made the purchase of this, especially with our current ATF. I was like, wait, 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 zero reset triggers. I don't want to get in deep shit and have the alphabet boy showing up to my house. And so I made the phone call. These are not considered machine guns, nor are they considered like bump fire stock accessories. It just, when the, the name zero reset trigger means it has a very small reset. It does have a reset. You aren't going to be able to just pull this trigger and go fully automatic. It does have a reset, but the reset is short, but the rifle is made to be semi-automatic. But because the reset is shorter and there's like zero creep and... Um, zero pre-travel it, it's going to be a very crisp single stage trigger that you put your finger on pull it back very very crisp this has a four and a half pound break on it and then the reset is very short but it's not considered a machine gun nor is it considered a bump stock accessory and i just wanted to pump point that out because there's a lot of stuff going on with the Alphabet Boys right now showing up at people's houses saying, hey, you bought this. This is actually considered illegal. And this is not, this is 100% legal. It is just the highest quality semi-automatic trigger that you can find. And of course, finding a rifle that is made with moon rock or moonstone, whatever this 5 million degree proof handguard and upper and lower is made out of, course they're going to have the best trigger in it as well um it is a hybrid trigger that's another thing that i'll talk about too meaning as i look at you through this trigger well this is not a flat face trigger nor is it your standard curve trigger it is somewhere in between and it is supposed to give you a phenomenal experience as far as getting finger on the trigger and not having to be in a dedicated sweet spot but also allowing you to have a very comfortable experience firing this rifle in rapid succession. And accurately, that's the big thing, accurately. So, inside of here, it looks extremely clean. They have a standard, not really excited about this. I, I talked to them and I will say this. Um, they have a standard buffer tube spring, right? Capture spring. And with as high quality of this rifle is, I would like to see them pair with JP Enterprise to incorporate JP's, you know, alien technology silent capture spring or buffer spring. Just because I haven't shot this yet, so I don't know how loud this is going to be. But I know when I was in the military with a standard issue capture spring, I hate that doing, 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 doing noise in my ear as I'm firing rapid succession. And in my other ARs, I actually have put the JP Enterprise silent capture spring or buffer tube spring into my rifle. And I will be doing that with this rifle as well. So while I have this open, let's talk about the linear compression pad that will be going up here in the front of the lower part of the receiver or the lower receiver down here. And what that does is that when the rifle is closed and your takedown is, is uh, or takedown button is pushed through, right? And, and the rifle can't open and you can fully charge and work the bolt in the action. There's typically in most ARs some wiggle room between the upper and lower receiver. I will say with this rifle right now, I have not installed the linear compression pad, which is what I'm about to explain and why they have that on this. This upper and lower receiver tolerance is amazing. There's maybe a fraction of a millimeter of wiggle between the upper and lower. And it says on their website 
And the owner has told me, you do not need to have this linear compression pad in order to operate this rifle successfully. And so this is just kind of an added feature that they threw into this rifle. And what it does, let me push that little takedown pin out. I'm going to just put this in really quickly. Open up this bag. Take out what looks like a piece of gum. Yellow gum. Oof. And then inside here, where the front takedown button and, and hinges, there's a little slot. All you do is just push this little piece of gum into that slot like so. And when I close this, it's going to create resistance or pressure against the upper receiver versus the lower receiver. And then push my pin through. And now there is zero zero wiggle, zero wiggle between the upper and lower receiver. Space age technology, right? So I guess one of the reasons why they couldn't actually, you know, mill it down that, that far is because cutting moonstone or whatever this stuff is made out of is, is, is very difficult to get that to that precision. So by adding this little linear compression pad where this hinge is, eliminates any sort of wiggle at all. I mean, there's zero wiggle. There's the tolerance on that now is beyond human recognizable differences. So now it does make it, as I'm noticing, more difficult to retrieve this takedown pin. It doesn't feel horribly hard, but I'm going to take one of these Allen keys and push it out and press the top to the bottom comes out actually a lot easier squeeze pull open this up now we can put in our bolt carrier group as well as our charging handle standard bolt carrier group assembly now this is heavy duty bolt carrier group this is meant for if you have the license, you can swap out this trigger to a fully automatic sear and everything. This bull carrier group is meant for full auto. It's rated full auto. And it can withstand a lot of pressure. This rifle isn't chambered in your normal 223 or your 556. It's your 223 Wildy or Wild, W-Y-L-D, depending on how you want to say it. And it can take both your standard 223 or your 556. Let's go ahead and put this charging assembly into the rifle. Feels good in the hand. Tight tolerances. Holy moly, is that tight? Let's feel this. Let's see if that just goes in nicely. Come on, pull out. All right. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, that looks good. Pop that open. All right. So, man, this you could just tell touching this rifle, the tolerances that this was made with are insane. Okay. I mean, you could just feel that. Let me take a look down this. Let's remove the uh, BCG really quick. Okay. I'll get back to you in a second. And we will take a look down. That is a very... Okay. So they have shot this rifle for sure. Sure, they tested it out for tolerances and whatnot, but the grooves and the the 
consistency of the rifling in that barrel is phenomenal. Phenomenal. So, all I'm seeing right now, other than the fact that I have to wait for my dead air silencer to actually come back, you know, or not come back, but allow me to purchase it, or not purchase, but get it out of NFA tax stamp jail. The only thing that I'm seeing right now that I would like to do, that I would just imagine, because I haven't shot this yet, would be the capture spring or the buffer tube spring. Okay. So kind of a cool feature. Flap up. Moon rock finish. Flap down. On the bull carrier grip, you get the blackout defense logo. Really cool. All right. Feel how this feels. Oh, that's clean. All right, let's see how this trigger feels. And I'm on save. Up to semi-auto. All I have on this rifle is semi-automatic. And there is there's zero creep. There is zero pre-travel. There is zero creep. I am literally, I put my finger on the trigger it's just a wall. It all, okay, there we go. It literally, uh, okay. Recharge. Let me put it on to safety. Okay, it's on safety. There's actual creep in the safety location. There is no creep or pre-travel in the semi-automatic let's fire this this firearm location that's crazy so recharge put back into safe and you can even hear it i'm on safe right and there's a little bit of like pre-travel creep but it doesn't break right because we're in safe okay but when i switch it to fire or semi-auto There is zero pre-travel, zero creep. It just breaks. And let me see, let me keep my finger on the trigger. Reset. And for, it's about, I would say half a millimeter of, of reset. That is it, that's crazy. So it, it's called a zero reset trigger, but it's not really. Right, because if it was legitimately a zero reset trigger, it would be fully automatic, and it would have cost me a lot more money for this, and it would have taken a lot longer than sixty days to get this from the manufacturer. Um, it does have a reset, zero creep, zero pre-travel, but if I have my finger down on the trigger, reset the charging handle, and let it ever so gently. It's about one, if I'm, if I'm probably going to measure from the end of the trigger, meaning down here, from the reset point to where it goes back, I would say that is probably about one to one and a quarter millimeter of reset, which is extremely short. But it is definitely there. This is a fully functional semi-automatic trigger with an insane... <laughs> Feature of having zero creep, zero pre-travel, literally. So I don't have my finger on the trigger. I recharge the firearm, put my finger on the trigger. There is zero creep, zero pre-travel. It just is a wall. It feels like it's almost on safety. Pull the trigger and click. It engages. And then after that, reset. About a millimeter to a millimeter and a quarter of reset. And then it's just straight back down. Feels like you are... There. That's amazing. I have never felt a factory trigger like that before. That's going to be interesting to get used to. That's, that's really interesting. All right, so let's see how this just feels on my shoulder. Let's see if I take it all the way out. Typically, I bring it back in a click. There we go. Um, all right, so this is bare stock, you know, naked firearm. 
I'm going to be quickly shouldering. Feels good. Good, easy, cheap weld. The stock, standard Magpul stock, right? Feels good in the shoulder. There's good rubber on the back. It's not sliding up and down on my shirt. It stays. Once I have it pulled back and I lift up, it's not sliding up or down. That's, that's comfortable to know. Um, really space age handguard, man. Take a look at that. That's like space age moon rock. And it comes with where I purchased a QD mount. Oh, there it is. That attaches onto the handguard wherever I want it to be. But it actually has built in QD mounts right here on the closest bracket. Right, it actually has QD mounts right there. So if let's say on the left side closest to my body, I just wanted to plug in, I could just plug in right here. And, and or I could put another QD mount right there. Um, and then also on the rear, this is kind of a cool feature, underneath they have a QD mount built in right behind the receiver on the lower end. Right where the, the, the nut is, castle nut, goes right below it, is going to be a QD mount. So you could have a very versatile, fast-paced rifle that is only attached at the closest lug or slot on your handguard, as well as a QD mount back here right behind your castle nut on the, on the receiver. So very easy very easy to pivot this could literally just be hanging off your chest easy to move up manipulate right it's gonna be very easy and it has good balance the rifle and and i'm not just okay so let's see if i can balance it without it getting all weird the rifle has really good balance natural okay once i put a full magazine into this it will bring the back end down just slightly but because it's close to the balance point it's not going to be like this it's not going to be Pulling that up. Now, after I put a suppressor on the end of the rifle, it's going to be a little bit front end heavy, but there's things that you can do to combat that, right? There's things you can do. Plus, also, once I put optics based off this upper receiver, and that's what I have this Night Force LVPO right here, 1 to 8 by 24 F1. That's going to give it more balance. And I feel like after this rifle has a full mag, scope, and a suppressor on here, the balance on this is probably going to be perfect, which is what I would expect from a DOD engineering company that puts parts on the International Space Station, ICBMs, and also tanks for the U.S. Army. I would expect nothing else. And I would talk about this quad taper lock that's inside of here, but realistically, there's already plenty of videos out there about why this design is better than the standard AR-15 design that's been out, the mil-spec design for so long, and how this design right here will allow you to get a full breakdown of the rifle without having much of a point of impact shift when you reassemble it because the barrel is going to come back to the exact location that it was at before you broke the rifle down. Go ahead, watch some videos. I might link them in the bottom. But I also like this speed magwell cut right here. Um, speaking of mags, this came with a 10 round mag. Trust me, it's not the only thing I have in my house, but let's see how it feels. The only good thing about these like little short mags is that um, they're great for like when you're at the range and you're just trying to get things sighted in. All right, easy enough. It comes out real easy. Push the button down. Good ejection. Goes in. Comes out. The okay. All right, this is a PMAG 10 rounder, and 
I'm not even using gravity. That's just ejecting it. This is engineered so well, I cannot wait to take this to the range. Most advanced AR-15 ever made in my hands. Ultra lightweight. This thing's like roughly six pounds, I believe, just in this configuration. Beautiful, beautiful design. This moon rock finish. I think they call it like stealth finish or something. I don't know, whatever. Whatever the uh, moon rock finish comes in, stealth. Beautiful design. They've thought of everything. Easy enough to break down, even with that linear compression pad installation. You just grab the top, lower receiver. Easy to pull out. The takedown pin opens up. And this thing is, I mean... You know what I feel like right now? I'm holding a Bugatti. I feel like Andrew T. What color is your Bugatti? All right, until next time. Peace!